رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل أقدة من لساني يفقه قولي سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم These assumptions and presumptions are decorated by shaitan and then he provides this data, this data to our mind so we process it and we don't know that how it spoils our heart I was saying that as for the hasid, you would never find any hasid having the peace of mind. And same way, in, in the same vein, in the same breath, you will never find any person practicing negative thinking and he's having the peace of mind. Because these are two opposite poles. Peace of mind, contentment of the heart and negative thinking cannot go together. They cannot walk together. There are two opposite poles. If there is if there is contentment of the heart, it is only when we have the good thinking about good good intention about others. And that brings the goal solution, satisfaction and peace of mind. But once a person practices as that of hasad, when a person practices negative thinking, first and foremost thing he can feel we can feel this that a person is robbed of the peace of mind. Is less less now because the impact of the negative thinking impact of the so zone is that it makes a person restless and that's enough for us to understand that it is uh, it is one of the reprehensible abominable act because all forms of ibadah that brings calm consolation peace and satisfaction to the heart that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says those who remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it is in the remembrance of Allah which hosts the satisfaction of the heart, the peace of mind. Indeed, it is in the in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the hearts are contented. They achieve the satisfaction. But when a person practices any of the evil and prohibited prohibited thing like hasad or suuzun definitely it's deadly impossible that such a person will be having peace of mind not possible on earth that's why prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam akdabul hadith the worst of all spe- the worst of all speeches uh, are one that you have the negative thinking then you start talking with yourself that is the worst of all speeches. So this zon, then there are different aqsam of zon. Some are permissible and some are wajib. There is a kind of zon, a sort of zon, which is wajib upon us. And there is also a kind of zon which is haram upon us. So we later on we discuss about, when we discuss the aqsam of zon, the different forms of zon. There we, uh, inshallah, find out that there are certain forms of zone which are important for us and there are also certain forms of zone yet another forms of zone which are strictly prohibited for us so we must be knowing that which one is permissible which one is obligate which one is wajib which one is uh, haram or muharram or which one is muba so <coughs> then uh, there's also another word used uh, that seems to be almost similar to zon, but that is different than the zon, and that's known as firasa. Firasa is actually uh, what you call, <coughs> we can simply say, a witty caution. Witty caution. Uh, firasa is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by virtue of taqwa, by virtue of God consciousness and righteousness, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless his servant with a sharp acumen. Though it's not based on ghaib, a person has access to the knowledge of ghaib. But at least a person is, he reaches to a level that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yes, ilham, there's a perfection of ilham, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inspires certain things to him. So he can assess from the situation, he can assess from the, the, from the uh, body language of a person that what kind of person he, he might be. But this is not with certainty. 
what we can say dominant gases over there dominant gas or there are certain evidences on the basis of those evidences you make a specific opinion about your friend or about a person or there are the proofs with you or there are the signs out of which you can you could you could infer that what type of person he, he, he may be and then you when you come across with these evidences proofs or the body language or the circumstantial evidences as well then you are very cautious about that person you come to know about his uh, bad behavior or something else then you, you you take precautions so you have to now negative thinking about that person but this negative thinking is not ungrounded when there are sufficient proof required by the sharia specifically as far as uh, our opinion about others is concerned because al aslu baratu dhimma this is one of the foundation teaching in islam al aslu baratu dhimma what does it mean al aslu baratu dhimma by default every human being is free of all faults and free of all sorts of flaws by default say Every everyone is truthful, so we have to establish that he told a lie. In order to prove a person is liar, we must have the evidences. But we don't have to bring the evidence that he is truthful, because by default every every human being is truthful. I'm not talking about the Muslim alone. Is is al aslu baratu zimma. By default, every person is honest, so we don't have to prove the honesty of a person. Yes, we have to prove the dishonesty. If a person is accused of dishonesty, if any person levels accusation against 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 a person that he is dishonest, then he has to prove his dishonesty. So, justice. Every human being will be considered as just, but oppression, tyranny, persecution. It has to be it has to be proven. So that's what we call as al aslu baratu zimma. So therefore, by default, all people are good, unless and until we have the evidences. We have those concrete and sound evidences that make us to believe that yes, uh, this person is wrong. What happens with the suuzon without the sufficient evidences? Just a few of things. A few of the coincidental issues. Sometimes it also happens that a coincident happens or occurs. You take it as a as an evidence. But we need to understand law of evidence in Sharia. That when there are sufficient proofs, then uh, the Islamic Sharia will be applied. So what happens with the suuzon, uh, contrary to the firasa, that you we make an opinion about a person. He is wrong. He is bad. Now what will happen? Any event that surrounds him, that will serve as a proof for us, because we try to find out faults. We try to find out because we have already made an opinion about a person, or there is a kind of hatred in the heart. There is enmity in the heart, and now whatever events occurs around that person, so that proves to be a kind of evidence for us, and we try to make it as an as an evidence for us. Whether this qualifies to be the evidence in the light of the Sharia or not, but we try to justify ourselves. Therefore, the person starts thinking badly about that person. So, on the other hand, firasa, as I said before, there are concrete, concrete evidences, substantial evidences are there. Then a person takes precautions. There is nothing wrong with it. But when there are no concrete, sound evidences, substantial evidences, and a person develops this negative thinking, and this is one of the thing. As I said before, how can we realize this? You see, the heart is always deprived of the peace of mind, the consolation. You don't have that person won't have the peace of mind at all, as the hasid always burns up in his hasad. And this, this person, the one who practices negative thinking, will always find him burning within. Apparently, he is quite good, 
but within is burning. That's one of the implications, negative implications of what you call the negative thinking. And uh, the root of this word that is su'uzzan, actually Arab says sa'ashay'u, sa'ayasu'u su'an, sa'ashay'u idha qabuha. When a thing becomes obnoxious, Arab say sa'ashay'u. Su is the noun form of this sa'ayasi'u. Its noun form is su. And so is also used in the meaning of in the meaning of disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And su so is a comprehensive term, al ismul jami lil afati wa da. Su is uh, uh, a comprehensive term which covers all sorts of calamities and all sorts of diseases. And su so also refers to disobedience, al fujur wal munkar, in the meaning of evil. إن الله يأمر there's another place Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about the jahna wasa'at masira is the worst of all places to dwell in about the jahna the word sa'at masira that is the worst of all so it is in the meaning of it is worst Su'uzan, worst of the thoughts. Reprehensible, of th reprehensible thought. That is Su'uzan. Uh, as far as the technical definition is concerned, Imam Ibn Kathir has mentioned that huwa tuhma wa takhawun lil ahli wal aqarib wal nas fi ghayri mahallihi. When you accuse without the sound knowledge, lil ahl, the family members, the relatives, one nurse, and all, all the people around you, or any of them, when you accuse them of the thing which they don't deserve, that is su'usun. Fi ghayri mahallihi, when you accuse them of a particular thing which they haven't, uh, uh, which, which they, they, they aren't deserve, they don't deserve this, because it is all based on our wishful thing, it is all based on our ungrounded knowledge, uncertain conjectures. And Hafiz Ibn al-Qayyim he says, huwa imtila'u al-qalb bidhunun sayyah bin nas. When the heart becomes replete of the negative thinking, you don't have any good opinion about the people. And there are many people always just castigating the people, trying, always finding, finding out the faults among the people. They don't see any good among the people. Hatta ala lisan wal jawari. And then it is reflected through the speech and the actions of a person. And Imam Mawardi, Ash-Shafi, ta'ala, one of the famous Imam, a sign of scholarship in Islam, Imam al Mawardi, Rahimahullah ta'ala. He says, Su'u zunni huwa admu thiqah biman huwa laha ahlun. Having the mistrust with the one who deserve our trust. Developing the mistrust against the one who deserve our trust. Or having the mistrust with the one who deserve, it, who deserve to be trusted. That is Su'u zun. This is what you call the linguistic meaning and technical meaning of Su'u zun. And, uh, you know, the, what makes our problems even worse they really are. Sometimes, as we know that problem, it is a part of our life. I always say that ups and downs is a part of our life. Our heartbeat, our pulse, it is indicated through ups and downs, ups and downs. As long as we have ups and downs, we, we, we are alive. When it is straight line, it means we are dead. Likewise, our social life is, it, it, it is comprised of ups and downs, ups and downs. But so the problems will arise as a means of test. We have to face many things. But 
during our journey to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we face all these hardships, all these problems. But one thing is al ataya ala qadr al-balaya. When a person is tested severely, then he deserves the higher merits. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. One test after another test, test. But he remained steadfast. He showed his perseverance. Then Allah said, Inni ja'iluka nasi mama. Now you deserve the leadership. In our worldly matters also, those who qualify the toughest exams, they deserve the high position in the society. But what happens, as we know that these tests and problems, they are part of our life. We cannot have a life where there is a smooth line going on. Yes, if there is taqwa, there is sufficient knowledge, there is taqwa. And a person knows the purpose of life, he can stratify the things properly. Wallahi, then these problems become a source of getting higher and higher stations with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But what makes our small problems the gravest one, the toughest one, is our negative thinking. Whenever we indulge in negative thinking, what happens? Unconsciously, we are stretching out our problems so that they become, we become problem-oriented people. Instead of being the solution-oriented people, we become problem-oriented people. Where lies the wrong? It's within us. It's not outside we need to find out the answer for this. But it is within us. When we develop the source zone about others, this makes a person to be a problem-oriented person. Now he finds the faults and flaws everywhere. Even in the normal things, he'll take, it, he'll take a strong note of it. He'll take it too serious. Though it, isn't, it didn't deserve to be taken so serious as we take it. Because actually this is when a person has forgotten his determining the priorities. Determination of priorities is, in a, is immensely important. What's my utmost priority in the world? When we set, when we set our priority that my pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through all means I can, bringing all my emotions, sentiments, thoughts, subservient to his command, subservient to his sharia. That's my first priority. The first and foremost reward for this person is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make him free of all sorts of ten problems won't stop. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless him with the approach, with the heart. Even at the uh, we can say, at the middle of the problems, he can derive the true pleasure from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sayyidina Bilal radiallahu anhu, he is being tortured many a times. And this is, wallahi, even uh, many of my friends, when the, they were taken by the Indian soldiers, they were captivated by them, captured by them, and they were, they were inflicted the brutal tortures. They said, they felt at that time as if they are closest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Though they are facing the physical hardships, physical tortures, but they felt that they are very close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Actually, it is when a person has set his priority in the life. On the other hand, when our priorities are, are of worldly in nature, definitely the small things will trouble us. Mutanabbi was one of the famous poets. Uh, the, some of the scholars, are, as far as the Arab liter Arabic literature is concerned, Divan al-Mutanabbi, if any person wants to master the Arabic language, one of the required book is Divan al-Mutanabbi, Anthology of Mutanabbi, wherein we find the odes, Qasai, the poems of Mutanabbi. He was one of the famous poets and truly skillful and artistic poet, charged with the imagination. Mutanabbi. One of the reasons why he is known as Mutanabbi is actually the one who claims to be Nabi, who claims to be Prophet. One of the narrations is that he, he claimed to be Prophet, so he became Murtad. But later on, he, he repented 
and he turned back to Islam. But as far as his literary contribution is concerned, that's all established. Whether the story of his claiming to be prophet and then becoming murtad or then turning back to Islam, because we don't have the authentic reports about it, but as far as his literary skills and literary contribution is concerned, it is all established. And uh, he says, one of the couplet I remembered uh, regarding when you, when you set the priorities. When you set the priorities, then if the, in the, the toughest events seems to be so easier in front of those who have the higher ambitions, those who have set the higher goals in their life, the toughest and the most difficult events seems to be they, they seems to be quite easier in front of them. But those who have them who have not set the higher goals and higher ambitions in life, the smallest problems and smallest troubles seem to be as of the mountain, as of the giant. So it depends upon a person's priority of determination, determination of priorities. That how we have determined our priorities. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not our priority, dunya is our priority, then small things will disturb us. Very, very small things will confuse us, disturb us. And we will have this perturbed mentality. And slowly, slowly, we develop a kind of what you call problem-oriented mind. Not the solution-oriented mind. On the other hand, when our priorities are set, and our ambitions are high, our goals are high, then we become the solution-oriented person. Whatever problems we face in our life, we use that problem as a means to reach our goal. Rather to, 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 to think about it, it's an obstruction. It's a kind of block, it blocks my way. Those who have the higher ambitions and higher goals, who set the higher goals in their life, they use these obstructions, these difficulties, these problems as a means to reach to their end, to reach to their destiny. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless these people with a strong will. What Iqbal says, Nigah bulan sukhan dil nawa jampur sos यही है रखते सफर मेरे कारों के लिए निगाह बुलंद हाई विजन हाई गोल्स सुखन दिल नवाज सॉफ्ट स्पोक विद अ गुड अखलाक मैन विद अ हाई विजन विद अ हाई हाई गोल्स बट विद अ सॉफ्ट सॉफ्ट स्पोक विद अ गुड अखलाक सुखन दिल नवाज जांपुर सोस बट वेरी रोबस्ट अगेंस्ट ऑल प्रॉब्लम्स ऑफ लाइफ स्ट्रॉंगर इनफ before the problems of life. These are the provisions to, to the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yehi hai rakhte safar mere karawan ke liye. Those who are the travelers in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this becomes the higher determination, the strong determination. And then good akhlaq, good behavior with everyone. You know, we discussed some other day the uh, different kinds of akhlaq. Akhlaq Hassan or Hamida. Akhlaq, yes, second. Akhlaq Hassana, second is Akhlaq Karima, and third is Akhlaq Azima. Akhlaq Hassan or Akhlaq Hamida, the good akhlaq simply. Simply we say, do good, have good. So doing good to others. But if people don't do good, you don't do good to them. So it's a, we can say, give and take process. If they don't repay the good, you don't show the good akhlaq to them. Normally you show good akhlaq, but if they don't show good akhlaq, you also don't show the good akhlaq. Then we justify our position, okay? If you, you see, he need to be taught the lessons. You see how he behaved? That is good akhlaq, simply that uh, tit for tat or do good or have good, simply. But if you do good and you don't have the good, then you also repay with the bad.